Hi everyone, my name is Sneha and I'm a support engineer at Interactive Data Corporation in Melbourne. I came to Australia um, three years back in 2013 um, on an international student's visa to study my master's in telecom and network engineering from La Trobe University. I not only gained in-depth knowledge on topics like radar, um, telecom systems design, um, antenna design and implementation, base station design, but I also got the opportunity to work with Dr. Eddie Kustavik on a number of IEEE and LEAP projects. Uh, while at La Trobe University, I got the opportunity to volunteer as an events manager for IEEE. We were able to organize various industry lectures, meet influential people um, and brainstorm ideas with them. Uh, it was during one of the networking seminars arranged by IEEE that I uh, received my first job offer um, through Dr. Greg Adamson. Um, and I worked as an engineer for um, Bayesian Intelligence, which is a startup company uh, here in Melbourne, um, headed by Dr. Kevin Corb, um, and he is a pioneer in Bayesian modeling. Bayesian modeling is basically modeling of real time networks given certain probabilities, for example, weather forecast systems. So these are basically software implementations making decisions of whether to take one action or another given certain probabilities. Um, after about eight months um, working as an engineer, um, working as a part-time engineer, I then got the opportunity to work as a full-time support engineer at Interactive Data Corporation, which is my current role. Um, and to explain how I received my first, how I got my first full-time job in Australia, I did do a few things differently. Um, first and foremost, I did not apply for a job every day a week. I applied for about two to three jobs every day a week. Uh, it takes quite a lot of time, patience, to tailor your resume for any job that you're applying for. If you're spending anything less than two to three hours per application, then you're not doing it right. Um, so ensure that you only apply for like two or three jobs per week. Um, do other things in other days, uh, but just two to three jobs per week. Um, I also use this really cool website called jobscan.co, uh, which is basically like a repository of all the um, resume scanning softwares that they are there. So the first time, the, uh, the first round, or the yeah, the first um, round when you send your resume in and it gets scanned by this robotic software, uh, which then decides if uh, you match with the job description or, or not. So jobscan.co is like a repository of a lot of such softwares. Um, you basically create an account on that website and you uh, tailor made your you, you tailor made your resume according to the job description that you have in hand and then you upload both of those documents and it will give you a percentage matching of how well your resume matches with the job description. Bonus is that it also gives you these keywords that you can add on to your resume to increase your percentage. Um, so I always ensured that my percentage was between 80 to 90 every time I applied for a job. Um, and I think the, my, my, my percentage was 85% for the job that I finally received. Um, so that was one of the things. Third is use LinkedIn, uh, pay about 20, it's $29.95 per month, but pay that amount and get a proper job seeker account. It gives you certain added uh, uh, features. You can send emails to uh, different people on the network, which is like a personalized message, um, but it's more professional. You can connect to uh, potential employers on LinkedIn. You can uh, request to meet with people so you can discuss what uh, is what the field is that they're working in, if it's the same field that you want to work in as well. Um, so LinkedIn is a very powerful source. I also created a blog on LinkedIn about antennas because that's uh, and metamaterials because those are the topics that I'm really interested about. Um, it'll get people interested in your profile. If you're active on LinkedIn, they know that you're serious about finding a job in your field. Um, apart from that, try and add as many recruitment agency agencies to your LinkedIn profile. Try and add as many recruitment managers to your LinkedIn profile. Trust me, a short and sweet message 
stating who you are, what your degree is, what your experience is. You send that to a recruitment manager and they are going to add you, they are going to accept your request because they also are looking for what talented people. So that's half your job done. Um, so I followed, I followed basically these steps to um, get the job that I have now. I still remember I received a call from Singapore from my current manager. Um, he called me on a Wednesday. Uh, we scheduled a one-on-one -on -one, um, Skype interview with him and then I went to the Melbourne office. And before Friday, I had a job offer in hand, which was really cool. Uh, my joining date was Monday next week. So within about a week's time, I had landed myself a job. But I would definitely say that these are all the things that I did that got uh, me noticed in the job market and once you break into the Australian job market being an international student not having a permanent residency at the time it then opens doors for many other opportunities and I think in the next two to three years time I wish to become an RF engineer a radio frequency engineer uh, and be able to work um, in companies that do this kind of work so that's how I received my first job in Australia so in my current role, I'm working as a support engineer for Interactive Data Corporation, which is a finance startup uh, company in Melbourne. Uh, the company basically collects uh, market data from exchanges all around the world, about 200 of them, formats it in a common format and then distributes it to client. Now, being a telecom engineer, someone might think, why am I working in a finance data company? But this company has a truly complex enterprise network at its background, which carries this tremendous amount of data. It has TCP links connecting to every exchange um, that they take data from, and then they format uh, this data internally, and then they push it out on multicast channels to clients. So it is my job as a support engineer to ensure that whatever data we receive from the exchange that that data is transmitted to the client uh, devices. And any time when this doesn't happen, it is my job then to investigate. So I tend to, we go back in time, do crime scene investigations, see uh, why a particular device dropped data. And even one packet drop is investigated seriously because that packet could contain really sensitive market data that a company is using to make some big decisions and not getting in, in time or receiving incorrect uh, information can lead to the wrong decisions. So that's how serious the business is. Um, and being having a telecom background, it really helps me to understand uh, uh, the various logs that these devices store when there's a fault, uh, when there's a data drop. Uh, so I use my Linux networking skills to navigate through the network, find my way hopping from device to device and then finding out that one device which uh, where data drop occurred. Um, so that's my basic job and that is uh, the most interesting part of my job at Interactive Data. Uh, every day I get to learn about various different telecom anomalies, how networks can break, why outages happen, the main reasons why outages happen, um, and also um, uh, why, um, how the infrastructure or how the enterprise network is basically built, what are the bottlenecks, what can we improve. Um, so this is something that I learn on a daily basis and that is what keeps me uh, going in this job. Um, that's what I find the most interesting in the job. So even if your first job is not the dream job that you imagined, try and find, try and look for that job where there's um, something that you're really passionate about and then learn from there and try and, try and build your career from there.